In North Korea, as the country prepares to celebrate the birth of its founder, it's also rejecting South Korea's calls for peace talks. Statues of the founder and his son were revealed in Pyongyang Square today, but amid the celebration, tensions remain high. The North has rejected a proposal for peace talks with the South, and according to a state TV broadcast, the capital is preparing for an all-out war against the U.S. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Japan to try to deal with North Korea's latest military threats through diplomacy. Japan is also among the North's supposed targets. Japan's foreign minister says it's important for North Korea to abandon nuclear and missile development. Kerry was in Japan on the last stop of his Asian tour. Well, joining us to talk more about this is security expert Alex Holstein. And Alex, I've got to ask you right off the bat, uh, you know, a lot of bluster, a lot of rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Nothing really happening as yet. No. Uh, is there a serious threat here from North Korea? We have to act as if there is, because otherwise you're, you're, plan you're being very incompetent and, and playing a dangerous game if you don't take them seriously. So I think, and I think the Obama administration has done a good job of acting as if this is possibly a real threat. Um, so taking all the necessary precautions, putting the Aegis uh, anti-ballistic uh, missile system in place, that kind of thing, uh, putting, putting uh, uh, national missile defense systems, uh, you know, ratchet, accelerating their deployment in California and Alaska, potential targets, um, that, that kind of thing. Taking that seriously, I think, is important. I think they've done the right things there, but I don't think there is an actual I don't think we're going to go to war. I think if you compare this to the Cuban Missile Crisis, for example, if the Cuban Missile Crisis was a Best Picture Oscar winner, mm -hmm. this is sort of the straight-to-DVD sequel <laughs> that just doesn't live up. That's a great analogy yeah. because the reality of this situation is that it's a lot of obfuscation being thrown up by North Korea mm -hmm. because they want to draw attention away from their legitimate issues, mm -hmm. which is that they're a poor country that's not feeding its people, mm -hmm. and they don't want to have the sanctions that are crippling that country mm -hmm. continue, so they're trying to get the world attention pointed in another direction. Yes. The, th the threat of war. Yeah, I think there are multiple reasons why Kim Jong-un is, is pursuing this course. Uh, I think a lot of them are internal as well as external. Externally, I think he wants to be taken seriously as a player uh, and wants to be seen as having parity with the United States to some degree a nuclear mm. power, like Pakistan to some degree as well, that, 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 that it's a fait accompli, we're going to have nuclear weapons, you're going to have to accept it, and you're going to have to accept us as a nuclear power. On the other hand, I also think that he's uh, being consistent with previous North Korean policy regarding using the nuclear uh, extortion tool to get concessions to, to get aid. I don't think that's going to work uh, this time around because they broke their uh, agreement framework from last time that Jimmy Carter negotiated without Bill Clinton's permission, by the way. Well, Alex, I'm going to stop you because you raised sure. a pretty good point. It's like... It, Here's the thing, North Korea needs for, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, no needs problem. for its people to be fed. Mm -hmm. Yet they're, what they're doing in the, in the international community is saying, either give us some help, reduce the sanctions, or we'll bomb places. Mm -hmm. What kind of diplomacy is that? Well, I think that's where you get into the internal. I think for one, on the one, on, for one thing, I think he has to prove to his people that they're in a constant state of war uh, in or, and that they're under constant threat. And that also, not only that, but that they have it better than anyone else in the world. So there's this internal cohesion thing going on that the outside threat is always looming. If you look at North Korean propaganda within North Korea, mm -hmm. they have posters everywhere of, of North Korean soldiers crushing U.S. soldiers' heads and things like that because they're trying to make Make the people believe that this is a real threat so what you have here is better than anything you're going to get if they come they're going to wipe us out that's one two i think kim uh, jong-un himself has to prove that he's he's making some small reform in north korea he's trying to push uh, the economy over into the civilian sector away from the military and that's a dangerous ploy that's a dangerous game it takes a lot of power away from the military it's a military first country and i think he has to show bluster to his military people to placate them while he's uh, taking the economy back in the civilian sector i'm not saying he's doing that out of decency or you know trying to reform in the way uh, that Gorbachev did for example but he's 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 doing that in order to accelerate uh, to gain some economic acceleration in the country while North Korea is uh, giving us giving the world an example of their belligerent rhetoric rhetoric or bellicose rhetoric as it's being called mm -hmm. um, the fact that the US has moved military material into the area uh, has caused another concern to be raised and mm -hmm. that is just what China's reaction will be to all of this mm -hmm. they obviously don't want more of an American American presence in that region. Yeah. 
What is that going to do to Sino-America relations? I think, uh, Secretary, from what I've read, Secretary of State Kerry actually did a good job today, uh, or uh, 20 hours ago or 24 hours ago, with the, with the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese have agreed that, first of all, the Chinese helped uh, stiffen the sanctions, this last round of sanctions. They, they put their ink on, on those UN sanctions that are getting ratcheted up. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, this recent negotiation with the Chinese, the China, I want to see what the U.S. is giving away for this in terms of uh, our military presence in the South China Sea, for example, or things like that, but at the same time, he did secure Chinese support for ratcheting this down with North Korea, which is very important because this is where you risk a, a larger war occurring. If something went wrong and North Korea attacked or we got in a conflagration with North Korea, the Chinese are obligated to protect North Korea. Well, there's two prongs to this conversation then that we should talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been postulated by international analysts that what we could potentially see here is a partnership between the Americans and the Chinese in order to curtail any form of activity from China. How could that be possible if China is obligated by treaty, mm -hmm. by business pact, to protect North Korea? Well, China doesn't want, the, China just doesn't want a problem on the Korean Peninsula. They also don't want a unified uh, Korea at all for, in terms of a South from the South perspective, a unified democratic uh, Korea. They want to keep it the way it is. They want to keep the balance. Therefore, uh, I think China will uh, sort of play this uh, both sides of the coin, as it were, and, and they just want to maintain stability. So if they feel that by working with the United States they can maintain the status quo, they're going to they're gonna do that. Uh, it's last point, and I want to get your thoughts on this because nobody really knows who Kim Jong-un is. Mm -hmm. uh, we can speculate who he is. He's a young man mm -hmm. trying to prove himself in a role that his father and his grandfather had mm -hmm. Forum. What can be said about this guy? I really don't know. I, I don't even know if he, is, you know, he loves basketball. That's the, and Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. I, I know that yeah. he went to school in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, there's really, it's really hard. Even the the intelligence officers who were testifying in front of Congress uh, recently, um, the head guys were, were saying they really can't get into his head yet. We don't know. He's very young. He's the youngest world leader on the world stage right now. Mm. Uh, I think he's he's just as kooky as as, as the as the previous guys. Yeah. Um, but it could be dangerous because of the precarious position he's in politically. He hasn't consolidated power. That's the danger. All right. Alex, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Always uh, a pleasure talking to you. I love getting your worldview. Thank Thanks you very us. much. Thanks All for right. having me. That's uh, security expert Alex Holstein who joined us here in studio.